Okay, today we're gonna to be changing out a starter on this rendezvous. We're actually gonna change out three starters today to show you guys a few different examples, but we're gonna start with this rendezvous. Whatever car you're working on to change the starter, you have to disconnect the negative side of the battery first so that we don't, we're not working with a live starter. I don't wanna have any short circuits while I'm working down below. Okay, we're gonna grab the negative terminal. This way I don't create any kind of a short circuit working on the negative. Once I get that loose, Go ahead and disconnect this cable. Again, I don't want any kind of electric short circuit while I'm working on that starter down there. So I'm gonna push this out of the way to make sure it doesn't flop back on against the negative terminal again. And now I gotta raise the car up. This starter's pretty easy to get to. We got it up in the air now. And the first thing I gotta do is get this plastic splash shield off of here. I'm just gonna use a wrench easy access and I'll use some power tools for the rest of this to make things go quicker All right. you want to make sure you don't lose any of your nuts and bolts so it's good to have a magnetic tray or keep them in the top of your toolbox so you don't lose them I'm gonna wiggle this plastic off and out of the way now I just need to get these two bolts out and once we drop this down a little bit, I'll be able to get to the electrical connections a lot easier. Switching over to air tools because these are pretty tight up here. And, and, and you know, I like to let the tools do the work for me. I already picked out the right size socket. So I just got to <coughs> my tools turning in the right direction. And here we go. <coughs> I'm going to drop the starter down so that I can get to the electrical connections a little bit easier. <coughs> There we go. Now I should be able to slide this out and hang it down just like I planned. And now I can go get a wrench and loosen up those electrical connections. So two cables, uh, the battery cable right here, and then this is the ignition cable or wire that goes up to, for our ignition system with the key of the car, okay? Looks like Jordy a 10 and a uh, maybe a 13. Okay, air tools make the job go a lot faster. I already picked out the correct socket. So the first cable I'm gonna take off is one that leads right to battery positive. And I gotta make sure I got my ratchet turning in the right direction. I should've checked that first. And the second one on here is the one that leads to the ignition. I don't want to let the weight of this hang on that thin cable, so I'm holding this up in one hand and fidgeting around with my tools with the other. I'll use three hands, but this will work. Okay. <laughs> really simple. Let's get that out. Go ahead and tighten this or snug it down inside the, the vise to hold it for me. When these engage, there's a lot of torque inside these motors, so I don't want to be holding it in my hand. It'll probably fly right out. And then the next thing I got to do is get a jumper pack to. The case of this is actually the negative terminal. So if I hook this to positive on here, and because this is trapped in the vise, I can just use the vise as my ground, my ground connection. I want to make sure this cranks, so I'm bypassing the key with the screwdriver. And when I do that, if you take a look at the other end, you can actually see the gear kicking out and the motor in operation. There we go. Okay. Really easy process to test these. Since it passed the bench test, we're gonna put it back in. I gotta go and get my two nuts for the cables I'm gonna hook up first. When you go to reconnect this, you wanna make sure that you hook the wires back onto the correct terminals. And I, I looked at it before I started, but in this case, they only fit really in one size, fits on one terminal. Sometimes there's a direction to them also. 
For example, this one up here, it has a little tab on the side of it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that tab is what locks yeah, it in place. Sure again. This tab right here is what keeps its position correct on the starter. So you wanna make sure you line that tab up like it was originally before you tighten this down. Let me go get my air tool. I got my air tool in and then I can easily <laughs> snug, <laughs> just snug these down with the air tool. They don't have to be extremely tight. Just snug so the cable doesn't turn on you. <laughs> and I didn't get that little tab lined up quite right there. I gotta try that again. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's nice and snug. Just gotta wiggle this back up into position. And I gotta grab my bolts. And you guys might be able to see why we disconnected the battery cable so that those other cables don't ground out and short circuit. This can be a little tricky to get started, but I like to wiggle it around until I feel the bolt fall into its hole. I always start everything by hand. Sometimes you gotta wiggle things around to get them to all line up. And once I get a couple threads going, then I can go ahead and put my power tool on there. Okay, I got them both started by hand. Make sure I turn my gun in the proper direction and I can just spin these tight. how this went like that you just gotta wiggle that back up into place and then get this one started by hand okay I just got to tighten that with my wrench now. okay you just want to make this snug just to hold that plastic shroud on and that's it we are done underneath okay very last thing is to hook up the negative side of the battery again just like we do with any nut or bolt, we're gonna make sure we start this by hand. Okay, I just gotta get a final snug on this battery cable. And then, I know that the battery on this car is dead. We're gonna go ahead and jump start it. So we got our jumper battery here. I'm gonna go ahead and make my connections to this donor battery, but I wanna make sure that the two terminals that are on the ground are not touching together. Keeping these separated, I'm gonna hook up red first. Make sure you hook it to positive. And then the black one, I hook far away from the battery to any good ground, like this motor mount right here should be a really good ground. Because typically there's gonna be a spark right here. I don't know if yeah. you guys could see that, but. You yeah. saw it. Yep. Okay, so I don't want that spark to happen next to the battery where the hydrogen gas is being produced. I don't wanna have any explosions today. So now we can just jump in and crank it over. I always like to make sure that my job was successful, so make sure it starts. I hear some clicking. I think we gotta get a better connection at our battery. I like to wiggle these a little so that they scratch and bite in a little bit better. I even do it, same thing, battery terminals, and let's try it again. Okay, so I just wanna go and make sure that this car starts. That way I know my job is successful. So I'm going to do the starter on the uh, 88 Nissan Sentra that we have. So a lot of cars have the starter on the top of the transmission. Uh, the rendezvous that Mr. Lear just did was underneath. So we do everything from the top. But one thing you gotta understand, starters could be hard because things are in the way and you have to actually remove the things in the way. So here's my cables. So this is my positive cable right here. And look at that, I could 
that could totally cause a problem, that corrosion right there. So maybe a lot, and this would be example of someone replacing a starter, yet it, the real problem is the battery cable. So this is my battery positive, and then the, the wire going to the ignition, the key is this wire right here, which is a simple pl uh, plug that we gotta disconnect. And then we have this bolt right here, and then we have a bolt underneath. But the problem is, is the clutch cable bracket right here is in the way. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this first. We have no battery, so I don't have to worry about disconnecting the negative cable. So let's get started. Air rats are going the right way. That's good. And we're using a, looks like a 13 millimeter deep socket and the deep socket might not be enough because of the cable so this is where students sometimes they struggle and you just got to look at what you're working with and realize hey i need an extension and you figure out what size extension you need to get around what's in the way and then you just pull that bolt right out there we go there's that one one more and now I can remove this clutch cable completely out of the way and get access to my starter bolts. Don't lose washers, you know, so if something drops, you need to get a magnet and get it. And uh, um, always try to use what comes with the car. All right, so now I have my clutch cable bracket out of the way. I can get my ratchet on there and my, uh, or my extension, my socket. But look, this is what I'm really concerned with. I have to get out a bolt that I can't see. It's all by feel, okay? So this is where it, the automotive, it's really hard to teach students. There's gonna be bolts that you can't see. You gotta go by feel. I can't see it at all. So, and I also need to make sure I have a, a extension that's long enough to clear the starter. The, Biggest detail I could tell you is always do the harder bolt first. Save the easy bolt for last, but so many people will get the easy bolt and save the hard bolt for last, and that's backwards. Do the hard one first. And again, like I say, I can't see that bolt, but I can feel it, and that's all you need to be an auto mechanic is feel. There we go. I did the easy bolt for last, and I can't emphasize enough, always do the hard bolt first on any, everything you can uh, do with a car. All right, so I'm gonna have a, uh, the positive cable to do, and then I have the ignition wire that goes to your ignition key. So you push this little button right here, and then you pull that out, and that is what, when you turn the key, that sends power down to this, which powers our solenoid, and then the solenoid, connects these two uh, um, uh, connectors and the power goes from this post to this post down into your motor through this wire right here. So the solenoid is controlled by this ignition wire. So now let's do the positive cable and that's a 12 millimeter. And to, a lot of students will take this bolt off and say, hey, this car motor starter is not coming apart. Well, that is connecting the solenoid to the starter you want to do the one that go into the battery cable and you want to get your hands so you don't drop that bolt down the side or the nut so again you know there's my nut and i'm using the battery tray as my uh where i put everything and now here we go and there's my starter let's go bench test this so i want to clarify what mr lear did and what i did there's two parts to the, uh, to the electrical wiring, or three parts. The positive cable goes in here. So we're gonna hook up our positive cable to our jumper pack right here, okay? Right on that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take power from here and send it to this wire right here. So I'm actually gonna, hello, I'm actually gonna bridge this, which energizes my solenoid. That throws the gear out and it also sends power from the solenoid positive post down into my motor. So the solenoid does two things. It kicks the gear right here out and it sends power down to the motor. So let's go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna hook this up here. 
the the uh, whole vise is ground, but I'm gonna hook it uh, straight up because I have a nice little place right here to hook it up. Mr. Lear attached it to the vise, and then hook up my cable. But I put it backwards, and Mr. Lear's right. You don't want the sparks near your battery. You want the sparks away from your battery. So we're gonna do that. And now all it should be is bridging these two terminals. And come over here on this side and you can see how I'm, I'm just pivoting on that post and just touching it like this. Now what you can't do is you can't touch it here. So uh, maybe a smaller screwdriver might be better for your first time because you can't be sloppy with this because if you touch somewhere that is part of ground, you get, oh, take it back. You get a lot of sparks, okay? That's bad. This is also bad, which is touching the housing because what this is, this is connected to ground. That's like throwing my screwdriver on my battery. You really gotta be careful on how you bridge this. You're going from the ignition wire terminal to the positive post only. If you touch this, it's not gonna work. If you touch this, sparks everywhere, okay? You, you gotta really be uh, cautious on how you do this. Let's go back in now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my starter bolts in first. Oh, one thing I, I, I wanna make sure you understand. Here's our positive cable going to our starter. But look at this. This is our ground cable. And that bolts right up to where the starter is too. So this is our ground cable going up to our battery. This is our positive cable going up to our battery. If I install my starter down here, like it was, and I just put the bolt in and didn't pay attention to that wire right there, and I started this bolt, nothing's gonna work. So it's all about the attention to detail. I gotta include, oop, we wanna get that. I gotta include this cable right here in that bottom bolt, okay? Right here. But the first thing I'm gonna do though, before I do that hard bolt, I'm gonna do my easy bolt. Get the easy bolt started. And now we're gonna do the hard bolt with our ground. So ground cable going to the bottom bolt that you can't see on the starter. And I gotta find that hole, it's all feel. So not only am I feeling for the hole, I'm feeling for the threads too to make sure that I'm actually spinning this. And I can't get a good feel on this. So I'm gonna actually take my, my ratchet and I'm gonna use this, and it comes with a knurl. So I'm gonna use this to help me start this bolt. So that way, I don't have to put my hand in a really tight area. And I see like I got it. Yep, I did. I could pull, try to pull on it. Now get my ratchet. Make sure I'm going the right way. Get this down. Make sure it's level. I'm gonna uh, start both of them until they're just touching. And that will align it. Now I can go ahead and tighten it. There we go, there's the one I can't see. And the easy one. Plug in my ignition wire. And now I got my positive cable that goes to the top. Switch to the 12 millimeter. Just snug, not tight. So I'm not pulling that trigger down. I'm just pumping it down. So that's done. Now I got the clutch cable bracket to mount. Put that out of the way. Get that through. And it's all feel. You can't get your eyes down there, so the only thing telling me that I've got, got it started right is feel. 
I'm feeling for the thread. I'm feeling for the hole. I'm feeling to see if I'm cross threading it. And then look at that. Beautiful. And I need my extension that I had because you can't just go with a straight socket. I just wanted to show you guys that the negative cable that goes to the battery, it actually bolts straight to the body right here. And then there's a second cable, and this is the one that Mr. Fleming tightened to the housing on the starter over there. And that's your ground circuit for your battery connection. Hold on, rolling. Wait, 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 that was bad. So we became very aware of this uh, problem as we were uh, hooking up the battery. Uh, this was touching right here on the ignition wire. This, so by touching this, as soon as we hooked up the battery, the motor started to spin. So this is like this is a perfect example of you got to pay attention to orientation of the wire when you take it apart, because I could put this wire anywhere I want, but if I put it here, it's doing exactly what we did on the bench test. We need to have this completely free. And then tighten that down. Done. Now I don't have that positive cable sending power to my ignition wire, which made the starter start to turn. And I should be able to put this up here. And look at that. No turning. So let's go start it. Push the clutch all the way down. Make sure it's in neutral. Oh, we gotta wiggle the terminals. Come on, grab the dead battery. Okay, this is an 88 Ranger we're working on. We're gonna pull the starter out of this one. This one is really, really easy. So really all we have to do is take the power wire off the um, starter motor and then three bolts to hold it in. And with my air tools, I'll have this thing out really quick. First, I wanna take that bolt off and just to let you know, we already disconnected the battery up top. Fairly small wrench to get this off, so I'm not gonna use a power tool here. I can get that loose with my fingers. And just a reminder, we already disconnected the uh, battery. So this has a really little nut on it and I don't want to lose these parts. So I'm going to spin this together and let that hang. And all I have to do is take the three bolts and hold the starter to the bell housing. And with this air tool, it should be pretty quick. Make sure you got it going in the right direction. And we'll go to this top one first. He says, go to the harder bolts first. And that was the hardest one. And then when I get this last one out, that starter's going to want to tip out of there. I have to hold it with one hand. And believe it or not, that's it, you guys. This thing's out of here. And so now we can take it over to the bench and test it. Okay, we're going to show you guys the side of the starter. Let me take this lid off. This is what throws the gear out into the, uh, to engage into the flywheel. So when the magnetic force pulls this lever down, it also engages the starter motor at the same time. When you release the key, the magnetism disappears and that wheel, that gear disengages. So we can test it. You guys can actually see that working. Again, with this one, there's no solenoid. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook my positive up to where the positive cable went to in the vehicle and i'm going to hook my negative it's going to work as soon as you hook that up okay well i didn't yeah. hook the battery up yet so. okay so we got the uh, battery hooked up and i'm going to have because there's no solenoid on here i have to just directly connect this to the starter to see if it rotates now you guys see that we shouldn't be getting sparks like that that's what happens when it's called a dead short when positive is hooked right to negative and what's this an indication of well, i don't hear the starter moving and a short circuit like that indicates this starter's bad so we actually found a bad one 
We're gonna have to get a new one before we show you the rest of the video on the installation. So it looks like we have an internal problem in this starter. Something with the magnetic field is not being creating enough strong field to pull this pole shoe down and actually engage everything. So Mr. Fleming's gonna help it a little bit. We'll show you this thing. We can get it to work. Go ahead. So this is the connection right here. So if I lift this up, you can see that's the electrical connection right here. I have to undo it but that smoke that so. metal that this should move down to make that connection. When he hooks it up, it doesn't. This is called a movable portion. So the motor itself is good, but the, the the magnetic field that's supposed to pull this down is failing. And so it takes that extra little help for I mean, let's do it one more time so they can see. So he, this should go down right now, and it doesn't. Once when I pull it down. It's actually working pretty good right now, but yeah, it's not pulling that shoe down. Mm -hmm. And this is an old Ford movable pull shoe starter. They don't make these anymore, except to replace.